Hello everyone, today I'd like to show you a brief video of the Cobra Walker. The Cobra is the newest addition to Last Oasis. It acts as a bit of a sentry, but it can also be used in an offensive manner when done correctly. Due to how new the Walker is, it's hard to tell what its full capabilities are, but if nothing else, it causes a change in the way that people attack and defend their bases. Now I'd like to share with you some of the information that I've found about the Cobra. When you first build the Cobra, it comes in an undeployed state. It takes approximately three minutes for the Cobra to deploy. In that time, the arm with the ballista on it will rotate upwards. Something to keep in mind is that you can push the Cobra very easily, and pushing it will not affect the deployment, but it surely will affect the aim if you try to push it while it is deployed and firing. But I'll cover that a little further later. To undeploy the walker, it's the same process as deploying it, except it only takes 30 seconds. Additionally, the deployment is not affected by combat tag or by being in the L zone. But be careful, because the walker only has a hard status, which means the entire walker can be destroyed with nothing but bolts or any other mounted weaponry. When it comes to base defense with the Cobra, there's many different options. You can have it out and deployed, you can build a structure around it, and if you build a structure around it, you can actually deploy it inside through the roof, which gives you the option to potentially put a tower up on the top of the base that can protect the majority of the turret. One quick side note about that is that you don't actually need the legs on the Cobra to be able to deploy it. So when you set it up in a base, you can have it much lower to the ground than if it had legs on it. Now that we've covered some of the basics, let's get into the fun stuff. When it comes to range, the Cobra is best suited for shooting stationary targets due to the fact that the further away you go and the faster you move, the harder it is for it to properly aim. And if the Cobra has more than one target, it tends to switch back and forth between the different targets. That said, the Cobra will only shoot at weaponry, such as ballistas, repeaters, tool pods, gun pods, and rupu slings. But keep in mind, the Cobra does not prioritize any weaponry that has people on it over any other types of weaponry. It would appear to be a first come first serve style system, where the first weapon to come into its proximity is the first thing it targets. One small side note is that when I had ballistas on the inside of a domus, I could not get it to fire at the domus. Now this poses an interesting problem for people with bases that have mounted guns inside of them, because the Cobra will try to shoot through the wood base, and it can do damage to medium wood structures, and it does a fair bit of damage at that, which has caused a lot of people to rethink their base defense systems, especially because a Cobra will not fire on another Cobra. So even though you have Cobras deployed and ready to defend your base, if they roll one in, there's nothing that's going to stop it if no one's around to shoot at it. There's a fair chance of this mechanic being abused by alliances, but I do not intend to reveal how that can be done. One of the last things I'd like to cover with the Cobra is the upgrades as well as a couple of the stats on it. As far as upgrades go, you'll be looking at approximately 60 tablets to get it all the way up to iron. And when you do upgrade it to iron, there's only three things that it actually affects. First is the water storage. At iron, it can hold up to 1,000 water. This can be utilized in a base situation where you use it for respawn points, or in a more offensive manner by traveling to other tiles to use the Cobra. That said, the Cobra is extremely cheap to make, so it may be more efficient to just make the bolts and take them to a different tile and make a new Cobra. Second is the storage. At iron, the cargo can hold five slots. Each slot stacks up to 100 ammunition, that said, I'm not sure why you would want to put 500 bolts into a Cobra unless it's heavily defended because it would be very easy to grief and very easy to trick by something as simple as placing a ballista on the ground at the maximum range of the Cobra so it has an extremely hard time hitting it. The best method with the Cobra is to have somebody dedicated to it and feeding it ammunition as needed. One quick note is to make the bolts, it requires one lava fuel, 10 shafts, and five obsidian, and this produces two bomb bolts. The last thing that the upgrades affect is the torque capacity. At iron, the Cobra will hold 4,000 torque. This will allow you to move it around the map as much as you need. Although I would still suggest hooking something up to it and pulling it and having someone drive it so you don't have to waste the torque for anything other than minor movements. Now on the topic of pushing the Cobra, you'll find that it's really, really easy to cause it to just run away from you, as you can see here. I'm not 100% sure if this is an intended mechanic, but as it stands, one of the easiest ways to deal with a Cobra is to have a naked walker go in and push the Cobra away from the battle. For something like this, I would suggest using a buffalo due to its maneuverability and the height of the deck, which allows you to push the Cobra away without causing it to tip or do any funny things. 
Now, as I mentioned before, if you have a Cobra that's loaded and trying to shoot while you're pushing it, it'll cause the targeting system to go absolutely crazy. When testing this, we found that pushing the Cobra caused the turret to literally shoot in every different direction and occasionally shoot at the actual target. So it's best to make sure that the Cobra is fully stationary and if possible, make sure your target is stationary for the maximum damage. Now that pretty much wraps it up for this video about the Cobra. As I mentioned before, the walker's too new for us to know its true potential, but I really think that it's going to change the way that people play the game, even if it only causes an intimidation factor and or a little bit more caution when looking to attack a base when trying to avoid having your base or your walker getting attacked. Thanks again for coming to watch my video, and if you enjoyed it, please hit the like and subscribe button. For more Last Voices content, check out my page, or leave a comment with something that you'd like to see a video made on. Good luck out there, nomads, and I'll see you in the next video.